ready to end. All's good. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, I think everybody on the committee is here, here except I'm committed. Uh, is um, not going to be here this summer. Mm -hmm. So. Are you Given that there are several people here, maybe we should just introduce ourselves. I'm thinking. Starting with I'm Gary. Gary, yeah. Dick Grover. Mike Slaughter. Yeah. Brian Mayer. Richard Soth. Judith M. Flink. Jack Hutter. Dory Kibuke. Mike Richley. Jacob Graff. Terry Wilden. Megan Winston. Okay. Uh, welcome to all the folks coming who will come tonight. Um, so uh, we're, uh, I, I uh, laid out an agenda for the meeting tonight. Um, on Monday night, the, the, there, or Monday uh, afternoon rather, um, a, a portion of the committee uh, interviewed uh, maintenance plan advisors as we had uh, agreed that we would be would be a part of developing a permanent improvement plan for our uh, schools. Um, after that, um, Jay uh, made a PowerPoint regarding his points, his point of view, which is not to hire an MPA. Um, and so I wanted to give him an opportunity to say that and uh, to just uh, share his thoughts before we talk about the interview process and the committee's uh, thoughts on the businesses that uh, presented to us. Uh, so that it was just, I think we should consider whether or not it is a worthy investment to hire an MPA. Um, I, I was not under the impression that it would be worthy from the beginning, but um, you know, we looked at it and um, you know, we, we saw the information that they would be able to provide. And, and I guess I want us to consider the fiscal responsibility of um, investing in that process. Um, so the MPAs, um, uh, I, I mean, I'll just start, this is our mission. So our school mission um, is to create a challenging educational environment where each student contributes to the intellectual and cultural richness of the community and is provided the skills and knowledge to become a socially responsible, self-directed, lifelong learner. And I just think that's a frame of mind we need to look at when we're making all of our decisions. So a lot of the information that we'd be looking to get from an MPA, you know, estimated cost, vendors provide this kind of information all, all the time. I mean, they, there's, people, there's all kinds of people that want to sell you a, a project. Um, there was a Energy Optimizers is a company that looks at House Bill 264 possibilities um, as energy savings projects, and they will do a, a free assessment on your facilities and, and give you a, a proposal. Um, so I used that old proposal to to come up with my cost estimates. Um, theirs was a little bit lower, but it's been two years and it's been COVID, so I'd say my, my estimates are still very conservative. Some of them are exactly what they said two years ago. Um, we were not eligible for House Bill 264 at that time. The project was over $7 million. With financing, it was $8.9 million. It just wasn't something that was feasible at the time that it was received. And that, that's one of the reasons it wasn't considered. If we didn't have $7 million, and we didn't have a way of borrowing 8.9. These are some of the things that we've been looking at. And you know what an MPA is going to do is look at some of your high priorities and the idea, you know, could we do this over time? Um, I have a project and I sort of prioritize some of the things that we've discussed. This is not set in stone, this is not this is just just throw, me me throwing things you know out that I think are relative, but this could all change. Um, I think you need an electrical upgrade, you know, first. I mean, mm -hmm. our high school, we would I would say we probably need double the outlets that we have 
that, that's an electrical upgrade. Before you do an HVAC project, probably be a good idea to address the electrical ahead of time. Um, so that, that's why I put that first. This HVAC is an estimate from them. That, that's the one that I played the most because I know it's gone up the most. Um, they had our gymnasium, putting AC in our gymnasium has 115,000. Uh, a vendor that I work with, I, I said, give me a ballpark figure on putting AC in the gymnasium. He told me 300 was low and 500 was pretty realistic. Um, this roof, this is based on their numbers. Uh, doors and windows, these are doors and windows that would help with our energy efficiency. So it's not all the doors to the classroom, it's our outside doors and um, you know the windows that open. Bathrooms, that is the cost, uh, was their cost to put new fixtures and refurbish the bath, just the bathrooms that we have. Uh, lighting, that's, that's their specialty. That's, uh, that's their biggest thing. Um, this is what it would cost to, to get us some more modern lighting. Uh, key card door systems for both buildings on all the outside doors, 114,000. Parking lots, addressing all of our parking lots, 750,000. Um, and then the track resurface is a number that I got from, uh, we, were, we met with the people that did our track project and they were saying, okay, you want to resurface your track, you, you know, you restripe it every three or four years, and you look at a resurface um, at around seven years so that you can get 20 years out of your track. You resurface it at seven, you resurface it again at another seven years, and then around 20 years you're looking at replacing. And I said, okay, well, about how much does it cost to, to resurface? And he told me 60 to 100,000. The numbers are up and down right now on asphalt, big time. So he said 60's the low, 100, so I just went right in the middle. And when I look at stuff, I'm always thinking of, okay, if we're going to do this, what would it, what would it cost taxpayer? But how do I? So I'm converting cost to mills. Um, I don't know. Did everybody? look at the financial presentation from April, probably not, but I have just a snapshot of that presentation. Right now, one mill in Yellow Springs brings in $170,000. I mean, it's in change, there's some change in there, but I just use 170, I like round numbers. So that, that is how I came up with the mills for that. I took whatever that number was, divided it by 170. That's why 250 is 1.46 mills, et cetera. And this is just an idea of what upgrading our systems would be like over time. Um, so I'm looking at a 10 year time frame. If we did all nine of these projects, you're looking at 4.4 mills at minimum to get these projects done. And then I'm another rounder, so later you'll see I use 4.5 because I, I'm realistic and I realize 4.4 in today's dollars is probably 4.5 in the future. But doing just those projects over 10 years doesn't address a lot of the stuff that this committee has addressed as issues. So here's a list of the things that would go unaddressed if we put the seven and a half million, if we went with a plan to increase our permanent improvement and try to make those improvements over time. There's, that, that plan doesn't look at secure best of rooms or improving our storm shelter capability. Um, handicap accessibility, that is, I, I think that's something that, you know, I greatly need to improve. Uh, we have water and moisture issues in the shoe box. Um, we have water and moisture issues in a lot of places. Uh, we need more functioning bathrooms. Um, floor plan issues. Um, that doesn't include getting new desk and furnishings for students and staff. Um, our cafeteria space and kitchens, we're not addressing those at all. Um, we don't even really have a cafeteria here at the elementary. 
Um, it doesn't replace the modular spaces. It doesn't do anything with the modular out back or the modulars at the high school. There's no added storage. There's no small group space in this. Um, energy efficiency, and the MPA is all, well, one of them pointed out, you know, brick and block buildings, just they just didn't insulate because that, that wasn't a thought back then, but it's really hard to add it later. Um, adequate office space. Uh, right now, the, the board office is very cramped. Um, it doesn't get ahead of the maintenance. We're just catching up. Um, you know, there are long-term savings with this with a single campus. We're not getting smarter classrooms at that price. Um, our gym floor, we can't currently host tournament games. We have no theater. We do not have a preschool program. And then all of that doesn't address any of the envelope of the building, which is in an okay shape, but it, you know, it it could use a facelift lift, but there's in that budget, there's there's nothing for a facelift. So if we had any of this stuff to a plan to improve over 10 years, you're talking about increasing this amount. So this number goes up, and the number of mills in total goes up. So when I look at that, I'm looking, like I said, at 4.5 mills, and I'm, I'm looking back on, on what failed in the past. 0.5% income tax and 6.5 mills for 37 years. That's what failed. Um, if you don't go up with an OFCC project, you're leaving money on the table from the state, 26%. Um, you know, if, if we're trying to be economical, is, is this the most economical plan? Because you saw the things that we're not addressing and then you're talking about, you know, if you want to address those things, you're going back to the taxpayers again. I, I like to go to the taxpayers as little as possible. So one of the things that, that I hear a lot is, you know, considering affordability, especially for the, um, the older retired community here. Um, so renovations are, are going to cost millions. So, you know, and, and I know from experience, all building projects take time and they usually take longer than you expect. So you can plan to do each of those things in the next nine years and I'd be happy if we got seven of them done. Um, because, you know, one year turns into a year and a half and then you're kicking your other project down the road to make sure you finish this one, to make sure that one got done right. Um, so. If a retired person who had no taxable income, they're paying property taxes on them, which I know is not the full picture of that, um, the first, uh, you know, the failed levy. Um, but we're talking about a retired person that doesn't have taxable income. If their home is $100,000, the 6.5 mills would have been $227.50 a year. If we do a 4.5 permanent, permanent improvement levy to do those things that I have listed, it would cost $157.50 a year. So you're only talking about a, a $70 difference. Or if their house is $200,000, you're talking about a $140 difference a year. If their house is $300,000, you're talking about a $210 difference a year for just that list up there versus what was proposed um, last fall. So I just want to make sure that, you know, we're considering, you know, like any cost that you put into these buildings, right now there's there's not a big sunk cost. Sunk cost is once you spend it, it's gone. Once you do it, that, that money's gone. But we don't have any sunk cost into renovating our buildings at that point at this point. So, you know, I just wanted to point out that it's, it's not cheap either way, um, but we need to make a decision, um, and that's what this committee's for. Um, so, I'm of the, the mind, 
I try to save every dollar that I can. I can see that renovating over 10 years is still going to be very expensive. Um, so I'm, I would say, you know, save the MPA cost and, and look at um, a more extensive renovation plan or replacement plan that addresses all of the problems at once um, and because it doesn't come at that much of a higher price tag and you would be able to address all of our goals um, as a committee. Um, we have two levies coming up. That was one of the things I showed you here. We have our permanent improvement levy is expiring. We need that money. We use half of our permanent improvement money right now to pay for our track. So we can't lose that. We need to keep that. Um, and then the emergency levies are both coming off that need to be re renewed by 24 or at the latest November of 25. We have to pass that money. So, Jay, I'm going to cut you off in about 20 seconds. So I don't, you know, because we because we got 15 minutes on this and it's and, uh, kind of off of the work of the committee as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Um, so I, I think you need to consider that. I mean, that, that's part of considering what we're doing is when will we ask for the money that we've been talking about in this committee. Um, I, I don't think that there, we have an option to ask for any new money until we get over these two levy bills. Jay, with the 4.5 mil bonds, would that, um, how long would that be paid out for taxpayers? So permanent improvement, it, you know, that would be something that we would have to consider um, here and, and the board. Um, how long do we want our permanent, you know, if, we, if we're going to increase our permanent improvement, you can do it for three years, you can do it for five years, you can do it for 10 years, you can do it permanent. Um, you could ask for 4.5 mils and then say, okay, what can we get done with that in 10 years? And then um, do we need more after that? Could ask for more in five years, but so there's not a determined plan. I did for 10 years just thinking that that's been a, a length of time that we've been discussing. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I just want to remind us all that the purpose of this committee that was set up by the school board was to assess the current condition of Oldsmont School, McKinney Middle School, and the Ellsworth high school um, that that was part of the work that we had agreed uh, that the school board had recognized was necessary given that um, the last levy uh, was defeated by 61 percent of the vote and citizens want to want that information uh, and the school board was in agreement and set up our committee um, I I think it's you know fine to share your, your thoughts that um, we shouldn't follow through with the work of the committee, but it's not the committee's place to decide, you know, we're just not going to do the work we've been asked to do. Um, and I think it would be foolish for us not to go forward. Um, the, on Monday, uh, there were three maintenance plan advisors uh, that were interviewed by a part of our committee. We couldn't, uh, to, uh, be aware of Sunshine Law, we only had part of our committee involved in that. These were businesses that help uh, schools um, maintain and upgrade their school buildings. Um, they had uh, really great experience um, in their portfolios, and I think uh, we were generally impressed with them. Um, we just had a meeting at 6 o'clock to discuss the, uh, you know kind of how to go forward with that and I think we came to an agreement that uh, we would speak to uh, that we're, we would negotiate uh, we're going to be negotiating with one of the companies uh, and can't really go into too much detail because uh, in terms of how we can uh, in terms of information regarding that um, now the maintenance plan advisors are, are focused at maintenance and uh, upgrades of current buildings. So, you know, uh, needs of the schools that are not going to be made, met in the current buildings is, I think, recognized by the whole committee. 
there will be the need for some deeper renovation within our current buildings and also new construction to uh, complement uh, what we currently in an upgraded state would have with our current buildings. And that's why Mike uh, Richley, who's our architect, is going to be, that is what he's going to be helping us with. Um, other people who can part of the interview process? Yeah, go ahead. I, I, I think you explained the interview process um, exactly as discussed. I just want to correct the record again because I, I worked with Jay a little bit on that PowerPoint. It's not the intention to shut down the work of the community. Um, and I want to make that clear. It's really to discuss what is this role of MPA, what we need as we look towards kind of the scope of the whole project and, and that's it. And I just, I don't want anybody to walk away from this thinking that, that you know, and I'm going to include myself because I certainly saw it and, and worked with him on it. It's not the intent to shut down. So I just want to make sure I said that. But I think in terms of the MPA interviews, you captured exactly, exactly that. Yeah. Is there anybody else want to comment? Yeah, I, I do. I do. Um, so going through the interview process with the MPA was very enlightening because I didn't know what an MPA could provide and could not provide. Uh, and, and all of the three companies were extremely qualified. They came with lots of recommendations. They had a strong portfolio, as you said. And all of them at some point gave a variation of the same thing, which is, well, down the line, Yellow Springs will have to build new. So they, all of them underlined that this will be a temporary, a short-term or mid-term solution to our needs, which really begs to me the question is, um, is it gonna save us money if we do this for 10 years when all of them seem to imply that we would need to look at a brand new building? How is that sustainable? And, and I know that we're referring to the goal of this committee in Arimbre was to make a feasibility study about whether or not it is something that we can, uh, that is meeting our needs. And when I see the three companies and when I hear them, all of them saying like, well, there's only uh, a determined lifetime to the renovations and additions that you can make. Uh, this is where I felt that there was a gap in our process here where we were only looking at renovations and not so much at looking at the other needs that you've outlined on your slides that are really essential to you. So this was my, my comment about the process here. Now I guess I just want to say that's not what I heard <laughs> from the MPA. So but I think we need to go to need, you know follow through with this process. Um, I and and see what we learn. Um, I don't want us to, you know, go down a road that just continues division in the community, be community about how to go forward. We have to we have to go forward in taking care of our facilities. Um, we can't just ignore them. Uh, and so, you know, hopefully through the continued gathering of information, we can come to some common ground. That's certainly what I hope. Does anybody else? Well, I heard something different also combination of renovation and adding. We needed something new. Let's look at that. Uh, wasn't limited to just the renovation. I would just like to say I'd like to see this process play out because we're going to gather some valuable information from whoever we choose. Uh, and once we get to that point, then we can make some firm decisions about moving forward. Okay. Thank you.
going to be able to be met through just maintenance and uh, you know improving our buildings. So um, I'm going to start with um, Mike. Just any updates? Mike was looking at our electrical systems and IT. Yeah, I I don't have a lot to add. Uh, we did in the Walker Mill line, uh, and in general, we looked at uh, some of the electrical additions and uh, panels and bringing more power. But the long story short is that we can add outlets, connections, and things to the buildings in this process. Um, whatever the specific needs are per classroom, we can deal with that as we move down the road. So uh, we go with HVAC, obviously, we're going to need power. We're going to have to do something to operate that and bring it into the building. So, uh, in general, we can look at all of those issues based on the priorities we set for As far as the IT, um, we did look at the overall system. We did uh, the back up. Um, we could do some repositionings of some things. There's some spots in both schools that have limited access or light access, whatever you want to call it. We could look at moving some of the access points maybe to the middle of the room. At some point, it makes it better where all the students can utilize it. So that's pretty much what I understand. David. I'm not sure where it was the last time, but I did manage to do the high school roofs uh, the year before, or the week before last. Um, it was definitely areas that have leaked. I mean, there was um, all along the wall above the offices, which is the gymnasium wall. I I'm surprised actually there's not more leaks because there's a big long piece of aluminum flashing that goes literally the whole length of the building. It's been repaired with some caulk that someone got a kind of spray, spray tar and seen on TV and tried to spray that on it and it still falls out, so as long as that's loose, we're, we're going to get leaks, but that's that's a very inexpensive, easy fix to get back on. Up at the top of the high school, there was a good few places where there was not really flashing, but it's where the roof member comes up, and then, you, you know, it's attached to the building. There's actually holes and gaps in quite a few places up there, which means, again, even though I couldn't find, what I, mean, I can only find two water stains, I think there was, on the top floor, but there seemed to be way more places up there that had damaged uh, membrane, which again is an easy fix. I mean, it's, it's just roof maintenance that's not happening. Um, equally, on the top of the high school roof, there was that um, sort of pagoda thing that was put up that was supposed to open and close and then the whole building, which would have been you know, a big improvement if it had ever worked. But again, one of those things like we were talking earlier on in the meeting, Things that were installed that never worked, that never were made to work. So we sort of paid for stuff and didn't get the value out of it. Um, the roofs on the high school, they're all sort of, or, or sorry, on, on the whole of the building. They're, we've got from brand new to medium and medium, immediate repair. So they're all sort of in stages over the next 10 years, except for the one that we can still get probably 20 something years out of. Uh, Parapet flashing, we have parapet flashing, and probably, well, a good bit of the parapet flashing, which is like the aluminum going over the, 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 the top of the outside walls, wherever they are. Joints that are loose, flashing that's loose, um, and, you know, if that's not repaired, you're definitely going to get water coming back down into the building at some stage, if not already. And um, all, you know, everything's repairable, they're, they're all just maintenance items, and um, should should be should be addressed. Uh, I, I did not really look at any of the heat and air or anything like, like that that was up there. I think Jerry has more info on that. Okay. So we're just adding on now to reports that have been given a month ago. Um, I just wanted to say in terms of the high school, now David try, is going to try to get up on these roofs and, and, take, and be able to take a close look at them. We know that there is new roof needed, a new roof needed on our on our uh, auditorium or on that gym. Uh, it, we need to, it needs to be insulated as well. Um, and and what we're we talking us? about, you know, I guess that we're badly got our half done. Most of the heating units up there, I mean, it's only a small thing, but the dirt leg on the gas line is wrong. I think nearly every single one that's up there. It's like here we are. What does that do? It, it it would take any dirt that's in the in in the gas piping going into the furnace. So it, it, it's like a 
a sort of a crude filter, it's just a piece of pipe. But it's something as simple as that, and it's still done wrong, is just you know, mind boggling when you're paying huge money to have these pieces of equipment installed. I mean, it's a nothing comment, but it just sort of again goes to the thing of we need someone who actually looks at equipment that's put in to make sure that it's all properly done before we pay the bills. And uh, Jerry? Jerry's been looking at the plumbing and HVAC. And he reported on the high school last meeting right. and going to be talking about uh, Mills Lawn. Well, as far as the Mills Lawn building uh, is concerned, uh, the air conditioning of the 1952 part of this building is accomplished by window use, uh, window units that are inefficient and they need to be replaced by more efficient, quieter, robust uh, system that meets uh, current air exchange volume standards. And uh, air, air uh, AC system serving the remainder of the building needs to be evaluated for reliability and service life and also if it meets the current uh, air exchange uh, volume standards. The heating of the building is accomplished uh, with two gas fire boilers that were likely installed in the late 1990s and teachers report uh, it's difficult to control the temperature in their classrooms and uh, it's also reported that it's difficult to maintain adequate level of heating in the west end of the, of the, of the 1952 construction. Uh, a determination <coughs> needs to be made as to whether this is a result of a, a flow balance, or a control, or a boiler capacity issue. Uh, currently, uh, there's a service contract in place for the HVAC system inspection on a quarterly basis by a, a big contractor. Uh, issues that require attention that are found during the routine inspection are authorized uh, for repair on an as needed basis. And the contract services required outside the quarterly inspection are also handled by uh, the, the same contractor. Uh, as in the high school, the indoor air quality is an issue. It's questionable, as I stated before, whether the, the uh, current uh, building code ventilation standards are being met. Uh, it's very likely that they are not. Uh, this needs to be explored, especially in light of the uh, pandemic. And uh, this issue, along with the uh, air filtration systems, materials, replacement schedules, all should be addressed by the uh, NPA in evaluating the HVAC system. Uh, regarding plumbing, the restroom in the older section of the Mills Lawn building need extensive updating and a risk, uh, additional restroom facilities may be recommended. As far as the uh, site goes, the playground equipment intended for use by the lower grades is adequate uh, access to the equipment from the northeast doors uh, over here uh, needs to be replaced uh, due to uh, ADA issues and deterioration of the paved surfaces. Uh, teachers report problems with pet waste and also lack of controlled access while school is in session. Uh, there's a drainage issue over here on the southeast corner of the choir room that needs to be resolved. Uh, teacher and staff parking needs have not been evaluated and uh, maintenance staff reports that roof uh, storm drainage to the village storm sewer on Limestone Street can be problematic and is likely due to uh, uh, insufficient hydraulic capacity of the village storm sewer. That's it. I did forget to mention that the roof of the music room, and has been attacked by birds. There's multiple holes in the surface, which is very thin, and then there's, so there's foam showing in probably about 12 or 14 holes on the roof. Huh. Interesting. All right. 
uh, we'll go through all our, all our reports and you know, if there's any questions or comments. Richard. Uh, I, I was on one of the tours of Mills Lawn, but I was out of town and a lot of the rest of this was done. done. But uh, last week, I, it's over two days, I spent almost a whole day just walking around the perimeter of Mills Lawn, looking very carefully at the external walls. And I was struck by several things. The oldest part of the building is in just as good of condition as the newer parts of the building. In terms, of the brick. in terms of of the masonry and any problems with the masonry, yes, the the, the newer windows are are in better condition in terms of the, the the style and manufacture of the windows. But we in the new part of the building we have caulking issues, just the same as we have in the old part of the building. That was that was surprising to me. In the same way, we have a railing about to fall off. At the, at the southern entrance to the front of the building. In the same way, in the back of the building, we have a large railing that's about to fall off. The, there's evidence of maintenance work having been done, but what's been done has been incredibly sloppy. Okay? And there's, I don't have any other way of, of putting it. All right, so what we are doing, I mean, we aren't doing a whole bunch, and what we are doing isn't very good. We have Window air conditioners, as pointed out, some of those are are carefully and soundly installed. There are a couple of them that I could walk off with today. Just pick it up out of the window and carry it off. That's how it's installed at the present time. So we've got problems with with taking care of what we have, what stood out to me, okay, as opposed to uh, fundamental problems with, with the the integrity of what originally has been built. Okay, and then um, I had put in here, it's, it's really kind of a side note, but it keeps coming up. Um, and the at the last school board meeting, uh, school board members were asking for information regarding life cycle of modular classrooms. And so I did some research, I'm no, I'm no expert, and um, I copied out uh, materials that I found online regarding life cycle of modular classrooms. Now, uh, most of you probably know the shoe, the, what I'm going to say is affectionately called the shoe box, which is basically a large part of our middle school. Um, those were modular classrooms. And they were then um, ripped in, and the roof is, uh, has, they've been basically totally uh, encapsulated in our building. Uh, so they're not they're not, oh, well, just leave it at that. The modular unit here, on the other hand, um, is, you know, is uh, out in the elements, as, as is noticeable. Um, so just to say regarding the shoe box. Um, so what I found out in terms of life cycle is that when properly maintained, according to the articles below, can result in a life cycle of 50 years or longer and can be indistinguishable, indistinguishable from stick-built buildings. It's noted in the one article that modular classrooms can be incorporated into a building by bricking them in and building a roof over them, and that is what happened to the, the shoebox. Um, in fact, the current roof of the shoebox still has six or seven year warranty on it. Um, I asked Craig Conrad, who was the maintenance supervisor when this shoebox was installed, um, whether the attention, because we're hearing a lot about, you know, it's just a temporary fix for our uh, middle school. And I asked what, him what he remembered the intention of the school district was uh, regarding this part, you know, of our facility. And he said, and, and uh, he had no, he did not believe that in fact there was this idea that it was just going to be temporary. I think the fact that it was bricked in and covered with the standard roof would also indicate this was not the original intention of, of the district. Uh, we do know that the shoebox has, has uh, issues. It has moisture issues is one of them. And when we looked at it, we found out that the foundation was not properly fitted. and and it was not installed with the moisture barrier. So that the, the current foundation is actually larger than the, than the structure on top of it. So there's a gap. 
there's a gap so that water can literally uh, just uh, run underneath it and sort of gather under under the shoebox. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the fellows here who know more about buildings than I do felt that placement of a moisture barrier and a skirting around the foundation, I think that's the right word, <laughs> would solve much of that moisture issue. Now, another uh, thing about the shoebox is that the floors are very noticeably bouncy and um, it gives, has maybe given people a sense that it's not built very well. I think that might be part of the reason uh, people have thought that. And I know, um, and we've talked about, you know, the fact that it probably would not take a lot to stop the bouncing if that is causing people problems. We know HVAC, we know there are other issues uh, in uh, the shoebox. HVAC is an issue in the whole high school. I believe HVAC is an issue there. Um, but I just wanted to kind of correct some of the information that we, of our understanding, you know, regarding modular units. Um, in terms of our modular unit here, you know, one of, not, not only is it in much poorer condition than the shoebox, but also it's very adjacent to classrooms. So that when there's music going on in there, and Brian's, you know, got his, his uh, musicians uh, playing, it can be disruptive to those classrooms nearby. Um, so I just added this in, just as a, a added information. Uh, has, now, has just that, has that been part of the tour? Of no, I, we have, I have not been in it. So I think I got crawled in inside. Uh, I can tell you that. <clears throat> oh, sorry, you and your one's here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the AC cool. side of the HVAC unit, so they're, they're two separate units. Right. On my side of the building, uh, MSD told Craig that they, there's a leak somewhere that they would have to tear the whole roof up to find. So uh, two, three years ago, we installed one of those window freestanding air conditioning units that right. kind of keeps up with things. The heat still pretty much works, but the <coughs> awning that was added at some point before I started here nine years ago um, doesn't really control the uh, flow of water when it rains that the rain gutter on those things is about an inch wide and so the threshold under my door is completely rusted away the bottom of my door is rusted away the back door crash bar is rusting off the door on the other classroom can barely close because it's rusted and it's the whole building is settled so you can notice you see the door frames are not matching with the doors um, it, it's a tricky thing uh, notwithstanding that it's separate from the building anytime a kid goes in on a company to the restaurant or whatever that for me personally as the custodial adult creates a lot of anxiety for me of whether or not that kid's going where they're supposed to when they're in the building whether or not they're going to come back in a reasonable amount of time I can't go looking for them yeah. And, um, you know, adding this information about the modular units is not to say that we, I mean, I think everybody agrees this has got to be replaced as soon, you know, as, soon as we could possibly do that. Um, even in terms of the shoebox, I'm not arguing it should remain a classroom. I don't know what, but, but, but I just wanted to kind of correct some of the information out there. And, you know, the suggestion has been, you know, is there some other potential potential use rather than thinking it's something we just, you know, it really is well beyond its lifespan. We should just, you know, get rid of it. I just we just wanted this additional information to kind of help us be better informed about our about our facility. So that's why I did that. Um, and it might help to know that the shoebox is um, two offices and uh, four classrooms. Right. And, four and four restrooms and our tech office so it is not it's not like can we just use this for storage we can the answer to that is yes but there's a, a connected piece what happens to, to those classrooms and spaces and I think it's recognized storage may not be that useful if you're on the third floor of the tower and it's it, you know it would and if, if, if the shoebox became storage that may not be that helpful in circumstances for certain for students, so I think that's understood. But it's just, like I say, added information so we're a little better informed um, because, uh, you know, uh, there are such a thing as temporary modulars and permanent modulars. Anyway, I learned a little 
know, so there's information there. Um, but uh, but I was surprised, honestly, to find out that they they can be basically equivalent in terms of life expectancy to a standard building. So I was surprised by that. All right. We wanted to talk a little. Okay, questions or comments about the reports? I have a question. Um, yes. So in the in the modular report, it said uh, fifty year lifespan and indistinguishable from a stick built building. Right. What's the percentage of school buildings that are built with cinder block versus stick construction, which would I assume would be two by four framing construction, like a home would be? Um, that would be a question I would want to know. If we're comparing apples to apples, or the cinder block lasts a lot. So I mean, the, the, way more the, the fifty year comparison here, I think it's not to a cinder I would, block. I would to say a the comparison that Judith was citing was they use the term stick built buildings, but I think what they really meant to say was conventional construction. That's what I was clarifying. So it could include. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can include these buildings that are blocked and brick. And yes. yes. Um, Other yeah, no, my understanding of a stick built building is, yeah, the framing is done with two by fours, which not a lot of schools are built with, with two by fours, um, but certainly a lot of buildings are. Um, and uh, I think it's important to note that in the life cycle of um, permanent modular buildings, um, it depends greatly on where they install properly, how have they been maintained. Right. Um, that, which, which is the essence of a lot of buildings, you know, you keep the roof properly. Um, so it's um, it greatly varies. Uh, Fifty years is certainly not unreasonable. Um, I also saw thirty-five as well. Um, life expectancy or you know it could be longer than 50 years but it depends on the installation yep good point other comments or questions about these reports oh, yeah. I, did, I did have a question for all three of you um, so you haven't been able to get into the trailer to do your inspection of Millsman was there any other part of Millsman that you were not able to to visit and to assess what more do we want to see yeah yeah mm -hmm. I still need to get on the roofs. You still need to go on the roof here? Yeah, I couldn't get Craig. He was, he, he, yeah, each time I called when I was free, he was not available. Okay. What about you, Michael? Yes, you need to. Sure. Yeah. And the, that, so the roof and the trailer. Yeah, Richard. I, because I, this is the first visit to Milsong, there's some more in the interior that I would like to see. Yeah, I haven't been inside the trailers, so although I did do the, the exterior of those when I did the exterior of the rest of them. But I have been. Yeah. I have been in a trailer, but I consider that a throwaway. I agree. Anything else? Jim, I have one request. Yeah. While you're doing these walkthroughs, and I know someone mentioned that there were loose railings at Mills Lawn, um, you know, that puts our students at risk. So if that is something that you see, and it needs to be fixed, I feel that I need to be made aware or Terry needs to be made aware because that puts our students at risk. And that should be something that is told to someone who can immediately address it right then. I'd be happy to Thank meet you. with either of you anytime with the information that I got. Thank you. And anyone. I mean, if it's, if it's going to put the safety of our staff or the safety of our students at risk, we need to know now. We can't wait until a meeting on a Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Um, so, uh, the experts, the building experts, we had a conversation uh, a week or two ago just starting to think about prioritized needs and so I just wanted to make people aware we are, we have started thinking about that from the point of view kind of of the maintenance needs of the building. So not, not, uh, so I haven't shared that with you guys because it's not ready yet. Uh, but uh, the, I'm just going to say the uh, different categories that we started with. 
and then um, if the guys want to join in, um, obviously the building users are going to, you know, um, uh, strengthen our ability to think about uh, about the prioritized list. But so um, so the first thing we came we talked about was security improvements. Um, we had just you know two or three uh, ideas that we felt were not security experts, by the way, for schools. Um, but I know people are thinking about secure entries, uh, including the vestibule, uh, providing window covers in classrooms. And there are a lot of classrooms with window covers that are not working, they're not functioning well. Uh, and then, um, that teachers have means of securing their rooms, where those were the things we were talking about. In terms of uh, the other uh, priorities we saw was roofs. When roofs uh, start to leak, you start to have not only, I mean, does that affect schooling, but it also uh, starts to cause increased damage. And then HVAC is clearly a very high need in both buildings. Uh, and it also greatly impacts education. People are too hot or too cold. Uh, it's hard to concentrate on learning. Uh, we don't want it, that to be going on for students or staff. Uh, and then um, starting to think about uh, more immediate things that could be done to improve IT um, that would not require a lot of investment. Um, thinking just you know, and also thinking about, you know, a beginning, uh, I know we're going to be waiting for the MPAs to, to tell us more about what we need, but um, investigating, and then electrical and plumbing, I mean, those are the, those are the things that we're thinking about. Um, one thing we did talk about, Dorothy and I had talked about this idea of volunteers to help teachers prepare their room, rooms in the fall, <coughs> like summer, we had started talking about that. And um, I know uh, these members of the committee had wondered if there were some things they could look at to just improve things in the fall, you know, um, things that we could possibly do as volunteers just to see, you know, for example, um, air handlers that are full of dirt or are dusty, you know, thinking about ways that we could be helpful to the district uh, to assist teachers who are, you know, having some is, you know, problems with their quality, for example, that we could start to help a little bit with that. So that was something I wanted to throw out there. Um, did you guys want to talk about about this, these ideas of uh, prioritized list? I'm sorry, can you repeat it? Because I don't think it was included in the book. I didn't have No, it's not in because we're not, it, it wasn't included. So, sorry. I, uh, you I feel like we should. But I, I thought we would just kind of let you know what we, how we were Yeah, but I didn't catch it, and I'm trying to type the minutes. Okay. So can you give me like the bullet points on it again? Okay, so sure. In, in order? Security improvements, <coughs> roofs, and HVAC. And then we started thinking about smaller things regarding IT and the electric system. So uh, can you- and That's as far as we kind of got. And who is we? Uh, well, it's basically the building experts <coughs> and myself. Okay. And we just started, you know, organizing and order. Organizing, or thinking about it. You know, the users were going to try to prioritize needs. Um, I know, you know, that never hasn't gotten done yet. I don't know if there's if you guys. Well, are I think I, I guess I'm feeling maybe I missed a meeting. I'm feeling a little like I'm, I missed something. <laughs> Me too. Because I know that users took a survey, but I yeah. would appreciate us being the committee and not so much the experts and the users because I, I, I'm not, it's not feeling right to me. Um, so, did I miss a meeting? You didn't miss a meeting. We had been talking about the next step would be prioritization. And I thought um, the users, and then Dorothy said, you know, it was hard because there were so many needs to try to prioritize the needs, and that was part of what we were going to 
trying to do something today. And it wasn't that we're trying to do one thing and you're trying to do it, the users are trying to do another thing. So I, I thought we would start sharing as we're thinking about prioritization. Um, and the, so that's kind of how we got to this point. We, we, will, we will prioritize the, 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 um, user. the user information. I'm just going to tell you now, though, it's going to be hard. <laughs> Because if you ask a teacher, and there is a teacher here, and two principals, it's it's all, how, how do I pick, right? Um, but we can take a stab at it, um, but there, there is a lot that we can we try. When, when we were informally talking about priorities, we, we were keeping in mind what had come from the surveys from the teachers, and we were, we were doing this balancing act between things that need to happen sooner because if we don't do them, they're going to become much more expensive versus things that need to happen for our own comfort today, which are very important in order to keep our educational program. So it, it, it takes both, and it's just as you said, you just even look at one side of, it, of that problem, it's hard to pick and choose. So as Judith said, we came up with some generalities. You know, we don't want the roof on the gym to fail and destroy the whole gymnasium. That just doesn't make any sense at all. On the other hand, we also, you know, have to make sure that we're we're doing a prudent job of providing security for our teachers and students. And we did discuss that, you know, as well as having those big items, that there should be money, that we should be looking and saying, okay, you know, what percentage of everything should go towards, I think I used earlier as the happiness word, but you know, who is we? You know what, in between meetings, we're meeting because we're looking okay. at buildings and we're trying to work on our okay. workforces to provide for the committee. So that's yeah. what he's talking about. I mean, we're just saying we, we, we do have to do things to make the classrooms, you know, more inviting and, and whatever. But basically, and, I, and, and we would be using the, the survey that the teachers did, you know, that, that would fall in, into that. But at the moment, we were really concentrating on trying to get just Structural that other stuff because we have to start somewhere. Okay. And part of the reason we just meet together is because we can't meet all together as a whole committee because we have to we're bound by some time. So we just have been working together. Just, yeah. as, just as the users and, would have. I guess I, I keep hearing a phrase a lot. Um, relatively inexpensive and I guess I, I want to know what that means what is relatively inexpensive does, does everybody have a, an idea of what that means because we're using it a lot I think it's a fair question on the other hand we also all have ideas of what's expensive don't we? yeah so so I, that's what I'm saying it, it keeps being thrown out well, there this is relatively inexpensive this is relative I I, I want to know okay. what does everybody consider. I'll give one example. This is what's brought up tonight. The difference between replacing a roof because it's leaking and fixing the flagship because it's leaking. One is relatively inexpensive and one is relatively expensive. Yeah. All right. But they both solve the problem. Uh, Short term. If, if we, we've made the correct analysis of what's causing the leaking. Yeah. No. And so relatively inexpensive was used for fixing the flashing and stuff. Yeah. I guess I kind of concur, concur with that, but I've heard relatively inexpensive for um, flip, fixing the bouncing floor and addressing the water issues in the shoebox. And I'm not we're talking sure about that's a few relative. few thousand dollars. And we're talking about the difference between you, you replacing know that it that's only and a few thousand itself. dollars. And I mean, you're talking about, I heard, Going underneath there and pouring concrete. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Putting down a plastic vapor barrier. That, We're not talking about pouring concrete underneath. Well, it. That, that was the solution to um, addressing bouncing floors. No, that no, that I no. mean, David. Had that mentioned. could be done. That that you would just basically put in an extra beam underneath it, which is a very simple. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, I I don't know about the where the flashing would be needed and, and the vapor barrier. Um, except I, I'm trying to get an idea so, of what so we're, we're talking about a few thousand dollars of what was mentioned about the about the uh, uh, 
modular construction. Okay. I mean, you would be talking of a fraction of a percentage of the cost of replacing that whole building. I, I understand that it's a fraction of a percentage of replacing it. I guess I, I still want a, a dollar amount. Is a few thousand dollars two thousand? Is a few thousand dollars thirty-five thousand? So that's why we're hiring, working on uh, maintenance and improvements to okay. get specific numbers to do okay. all of this. I was going to say, if there's on some of these, I mean, uh, one we've been talking about these, we've been looking at the buildings. You know, some ideas have come about out around some of the problems that are really causing problems for users that um, seem like it might be able to be fixed fairly inexpensively, <laughs> a few thousand dollars. And if, since these guys know a fair amount about buildings, I mean, do you want to hear those ideas? Because it might be that some of those things could make a big improvement. In, I, I like mean, maybe it's too early, but I would is like it too early? Okay. I, I, I would fine. like to leave for the whole yeah. school. Okay, that's fine. It's just, you know, sometimes it seems like it could help in the near term. Okay. All right, so um, Mike, are, are we ready to move on? Okay, Mike Richley. So, you know, there's been some discomfort of just looking at maintenance and upgrades of our current buildings, and with good reason, because it's not going to meet some of the uh, identified needs that are going to require deeper renovations and new construction. And so Mike uh, took it upon himself to put together a beginning list of uh, identified deep, deep renovation enhancement needs uh, of our district. And he just started the list. I know he, you know he doesn't think it's the end all and be all, but it was, it's a way to get started um, so that there will be this, there can be this parallel process going on as we're trying to consider the uh, this this option of maintenance and uh, building as we build some new build as well um, that both of those maybe going forward together would make people feel would be better a better idea so that's what he's started us thinking about and his list should be here I hope it is. Did I put it here? yes it's the last page That was a good uh, introduction. Mike. Do you want me to go through it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, so yes, this is just a draft, wanting to open the conversation with the committee about what needs to be addressed for the students, for the teachers, to support what we call educate. Here's another loaded word: uh, educational adequacy issues in the building beyond just pipes and power and and, and the keepers. Um, so this is just. Um, Kind of my way of trying to instigate the conversation and open up a conversation with the committee about how do we go about figuring out what the what's are, you know, what additional enhancement projects do we want to consider, and then how might the committee move forward uh, considering them. So um, my list has grown a little longer. So um, it started at Mills Lawn, uh, creating a secure entry vestibule. And anyone, please stop me if there's any questions on what these are. Uh, replacement of the, of the educational spaces housed in, in the modular. Uh, and I don't think anyone would agree, uh, disagree that that modular should be carted off-site and, um, and off it goes. Um, creating collaboration spaces, learning communities to support um, the education of the buildings. So spaces for breakout presentation, project-based learning type um, uh, presentations from the students, small group activity, um, and having those in a place where they're supportive of what's happening in the classroom. So you don't have to necessarily go all the way down one hall and all the way down another, but with spaces that are really embedded in their learning communities. Uh, small group rooms for testing, for individual work. Um, are important to support the educational environments. We've talked about restrooms, whether they're adding fixtures or renovating uh, bathrooms. Storm shelter is currently uh, on a moratorium. So if the moratorium is lifted, that might be something we have to consider planning in, in the projects. 
if the moratorium is extended, I think the committee could have a conversation about if we want to consider storm shelters uh, in the building. Um, Can you elaborate on moratorium? Yeah, so there, were, there was a, uh, uh, a building code requirement for educational uses exceeding greater than 50 students. Uh, to provide a storm shelter in their buildings. And that is, uh, there's a regulation called ICC 500, and that's a regulation that requires the, the all the occupants in the building, teachers and students, have to be housed in a space that can withstand 250 mile an hour winds, which is an EF5. I mean, maybe some of you saw pictures of what happened to the fire distribution facility. That was, I think, an EF2. Uh, so imagine orders of magnitude. Uh, the second one is what they call the uh, windborne missile resistance. So you have to take a 15 pound two by four and the assemblies have to be able to stay in 100 miles, that two by four crashing at any surface, roof or walls at 100 miles an hour. So it's a significant structure. Um, districts uh, that under the moratorium uh, are often choosing not to do it due to the cost. But that's it's a worthwhile discussion. There's also in-between solutions where uh, a basic building code is uh, designed for a 90 mile an hour wind, and a EF5 is a 250 mile an hour wind. So some districts are saying, well, let's just go ahead and harden. Maybe we design for 120 mile an hour winds or something in between. Um, so there's all kinds of you know, conversations that can be had about about that. But there was a mandatory meaning that it's not a requirement. It's not a requirement that ex, uh, that expires this fall. So that'll uh, be up to the legislature to see if they extend that or not. Is there a uh, square footage requirement based on the student population? There is, and I I would have to look up the number because I forget. But there's a, a standing square foot requirement that's not much. Um, and they're most efficiently housed in spaces that don't have furniture. Because if they're housed in uh, spaces with furniture, you have to discount the furniture because you can't put people where furniture are. So that, uh, that's more of a, like the fire code. You're, you're talking about the storm shelter space, correct? Yeah, yeah there is yeah. a square footage per occupant in the storm shelter requirement, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's pro I, my guess is it's probably based on the, the fire code and how many, because I know fire chiefs often come in and will say, okay, for standing room only, you can have this many people. When you add chairs, it goes down to this number, it can be set. Okay. Um, all right. Um, can, can I ask a question yes. about uh, Mills Lawn? So when I read create secure entry vestibule, and I might know the answer based upon something you said earlier, but through renovation or new construction. so. It's going to involve a new addition somewhere. So it's either moving a classroom somewhere for a new addition or a new addition expanding out. There are only so many ways we can go here for a secure vestibule. You might think in the right way. Right. Right. Yeah, I do. If, if that's now a good time to talk about the home, what do you want to, to go through both and then we talk about it? Okay. Um, I see that you've added the community collaboration spaces and the small group rooms. Um, do you think that do you think that there should be a different lines for the uh, private space for consulting uh, in uh, I'm forgetting the word right now. Uh, related, are related services. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Special education services is uh, another thing to add to the list if we need to provide additional spaces to serve those students. Yeah, because right now we get tutoring in the hallway, which is not really private. Yeah. There's no really proper space for, um, for um, yeah. So maybe it's, uh, if, if those functions can happen in small group rooms or if we need to add up so additional that, spaces for. It, to me, it felt like it was different from a small group room because I think what you've mentioned is that they would still be seeable from a classroom, you know, so that there would be a communication between small group rooms with what's happening in the classroom, where, whereas I know that we need private spaces for that, so it feels like a different category of that. It's a good ad. And, and then I wanted to talk also about Niels Lund, how there's probably a need to decouple the gym, which also serves as a theater, which also serves as a serving area expansion. Uh, so I know that you, you talked about the serving area expansion, but I'm not sure that it, it, 
it included the problem of the overlap of gym and theater here, and how the lack of the proper performance space is costing us money to in running operation costs. Yeah, so that would, if you would want to look at adding a space, that would be added, added to this it would list. Be added. Um, it's not uncommon, though, for a school this size to have a multi use room for student dining, gym. Uh, and, and there is a stage there. So. Yeah, so. And, and so I think what's, what, what we're seeing here is that we can't use our stage as much as we would need to, and we need to rent out. Uh, other performance spaces because we have the gym going on there and then the lunch. And, yeah. Uh, so at that point, you know, why do we have a performance space if we can't use it? And the other item that uh, came to my mind here is that I know that we have a missed opportunity in this village to provide a public preschool program, and we know that we have a need for it. Uh, because we don't have the facilities, um, and right now the, the public preschool program in town is providing very limited access to services because they don't have the facilities. And so there is a missed opportunity here to provide a service that is needed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, some other others, uh, furniture. I think furniture goes a long way to making the space feel more collaborative uh, and flexible and invigorating. There's a lot of cool new wobble chairs and things that. Um, help the little kids stay engaged, particularly those who struggle with paying attention. Mm -hmm. There's furniture designed for that. Um, things like finishes, carpeting, painting walls, flooring, um, case, classroom casework for storage, sinks, uh, teacher wardrobe cabinets. Um, and then I think a real important one would be classroom technology. So what's the vision for delivering classroom technology, what does that look like? How might that be deployed? Are windows under your hat? No, I, I thought they were boring enough to keep on the MPAs <laughs> list. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of kept building structures and things like that off of this for, for now. Uh, and then at the middle school, high school, it's really the same same list. I added a couple things here. Um, the nuance of the shoebox, maybe if, it, if it's for non-educational use, is it repurposed and for what use? Um, the three-story tower is a, a non-load-bearing steel structure. The walls of it could be moved. So the, the existing configuration of spaces of that tower could be rearranged. Um, uh, there's the issue of the band room at the high school. Uh, I think some have advocated to replace it. Uh, so there's that question. Um, and then I think AC in the gymnasium actually should be on this list, because I think that's an educational adequacy issue, issue with multi-use of that room. I think that room could also uh, see improvements for performing arts too. Uh, lighting, acoustics, just some things that you could do on that stage that could really bring that up uh, from a multi-use environment. Uh, and then, well, the stairwell safety improvements need to be addressed. Um, surely that should be on the NPA's list, but that's a kind of a health and safety and welfare of the students issue. So anyway, that's, that's an initial list to spark the conversation, how the committee goes about tackling prioritizing, uh, working through, you know, defining what this list is, would be a, a good conversation. I was going to ask that you, any of those extra ideas that you're adding to your list that you can send that I'll out. do that. Yeah. I'll send it to you. Okay. okay. Yep, I'll get it off. So what would be the process here to do with that list is that we try to organize them and well, uh, so um, I'm not sure what the next step is. Maybe you and I should talk, maybe think about it for the next meeting. Um, because, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Maybe there's another, like a, a balancing committee to the building experts. Maybe it's the <laughs> user experts or, or some other type of work that can be done to make sure we're, I know we've surveyed okay. the staff, but 
Actually, if, if I'm second run this from the user, should we take a stab at this instance saying what else might come up outside of this meeting and how to organize this? Since uh, we would be doing about the same thing about the other uh, document. Okay, sure. I was going to ask if anybody had any other ideas to add to his list. I mean, uh, two things come to mind. One, one really related to this is just the idea of if, if we are going to renovate this space, we're thinking about getting rid of the modular building and taking some classrooms to make other spaces. Like, is this a time where we think about the sixth grade move up to the 420 East Eden Road complex? So that frees up space, so we don't have to do an addition here and an addition there. Um, so, so I mean, that's like an idea that I would have. And then the second thing that I've been thinking about really all meeting is, you know, there's a there's been a dramatic shift in education in the last two years, and and there's been a mass exodus of educators um, leaving the profession. And I think, you know, as we are going through the hiring cycle, the the competition that we are seeing. Um, and, and attracting and retaining high quality educators that are going to impact our kids that we have now, our kids that we have in 10 years, our kids that we have in 20 years, is significantly different than it was, I think, even four years ago. So, so thinking about, as we are trying to, to keep the quality educators we have here, here, and bring in new educators as our teachers retire, um, facilities play a significant role in, in attracting and keeping those people here. And, and as an educator, if I can go teach in a brand new facility that's comfortable with the best technology, I've got storage space, I've got all these things, everything functions the way it's supposed to, and I can get paid exactly the same, why would I go teach in a, a facility that, even if it's functional, isn't you know as comfortable, it doesn't lend the same opportunities? I, I just think that's something that um, it's kind of a bigger picture of consideration um, that maybe even when we were looking at the, the bond issue, this past bond issue, and even the bond issue before that, for sure, wasn't really a consideration. I think it's something we have to think about now. If you don't mind, that conversation about sixth grade moving up to the high school is critical. I'd always be. It, that's seriously on the table, that should be the very first thing we talk about. Um, it's more economical to build one addition at the middle school, high school that's larger than to build two additions, one middle school, high school, and one in North Lawn. It's a, it'd be a huge impact on the planet. Okay, so let me, <laughs> let's pause, <laughs> let's pause. Um, we are just talking about this. I think just, it has, I haven't even talked about it to the board. Educationally, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so there are lots of reasons behind our thinking. Um, we certainly can accelerate those conversations. Um, but I don't want anybody watching this to think that sixth grade is moving because it's not. Or, yeah. <laughs> sixth grade is right here next year. Um, and, and anywhere, anyway, there's nowhere for them to move. Right, there's so no work that's no. kind of no, a good idea. No, that's a really good idea. Um, um, yes, and there will be. Uh, extensive conversation with parents in the community about this because it, it, it can get emotional, but there are really solid academic reasons for it. But we are not there yet. But your point is well taken. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't have to replace the modular, or you can find small group rooms and collaboration spaces within existing spaces, so. Can I, can I ask, there are two sixth graders classes here? Right now, this year for for this current year we have the current year coming up we have two. But sometimes there are three because we know that every so often we right. have. Correct. Next year I expect to have three. Okay. Because you have three fifth grades. Correct. It also takes a load off the kitchen. I mean, it, <laughs> it's a cascading effect. Okay. So. Any other comments? I mean, I think uh, thinking about this is actually helpful and kind of balancing out the kind of discourse we're having around, uh, you know, around our facilities. So I appreciate that you thought to bring it into the meeting tonight. I think that's helpful. Um, all right. Uh, so I, I guess there was just one thing that I yeah. wanted to clarify since it's recorded is that this list would be independent from the work done by NPA. This would be in addition. Right. To, yeah. I just wanted to clarify this for everybody. Although it could be integrated into the current 
it will be. For example, yeah. when uh, down the road in the MPA sizing, or we're asking them to make recommendations on electrical systems upgrades. Yeah. If we're putting addition on that's this big, you know, they need to know because yeah. it's part of the calculus yeah. and the cost and the sizing of equipment. So there would need so, to be communication and planning and uh, designing, but it would not be, this is not something that we're talking that would be under the realm of an MPA. This would be an additional yeah. step that we'll be bringing it together with their process. Will the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing uh, estimate for new spaces be the M M MPA's responsibility or your responsibility? Probably work together. But that was something we need to make the MPA aware of that that may be included in his scope of work. Yes, and uh, one of the groups, some of the groups that were interviewed mentioned that that they would work with the architect to figure out what the master plan is to make sure the things that they're implementing would support that master plan and you wouldn't be having to redo or undo work. So, yeah. Okay. Well, the next uh, item uh, is I had just written discuss a visit to Oakwood schools to observe permanent improvements and discuss with their facility manager. However, it sounds like um, uh, other members of the committee have suggested that we need to broaden it. Maybe Oakwood's not the place to go, I don't know. So we're going to work on both looking at a uh, school district that uh, maintains and has a permanent improvement plan of many older facilities, uh, what we are considering, as well as go to a new school and see what that looks like. Uh, so that we can be very well informed about, you know, what these choices mean. And I'm going to suggest that we, Dorothy and I, talk with Mike so we can think about this. Uh, we want to, I do think we want to see some, you know, older schools that are being rehabbed and updated. We want to see some of the ways that uh, these 21st century educational uh, needs are being integrated into those older buildings, if that's something we want, if that's, since that's something trying to do so we can see it with our own eyes and have a better sense of uh, what, what it would actually look like. Um, yeah. Uh, in terms of, of, yeah. of the vision that you have for this, uh, since we have a Sunshine Laws, would it be everyone? Would it be, how do we do this? Well, we can just break it into two groups. <laughs> it's, it's the discussions that are happening outside the meeting. I mean, we'll have to think about it. We're not it they, they, because they want the vote, right? Yeah. They want yeah. it to be I think it's broken down. I will figure out a way not to lie with the sunshine. Okay. It's conscious of it. Um, but I think, yeah, let's try to figure out that and we can share that with the committee and we're going to have to contact those folks and so on. And does that sound like a good idea? Is there any other thoughts about it? I, I would like to have, Terry, if that's okay, I would like to have your opinion about facilities that you think that we should look at because I think yeah, we'll because of we'll we'll the connection with all the superintendents right now. Yep. One challenge in touring any schools right now is they're not in session. Yeah. And it makes a big difference because a lot of times you go through schools in the summer and they're waxing the floors and all the <laughs> furniture's in the hallway and you just comparing that to uh -huh. when they're back in session and seeing them using spaces. Maybe. Should difference. we wait till September? It, it might. I think be it would okay. it would benefit what we would see. We would okay. see it in action. Okay, that's a good point. I think September's not too late. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and, and you can certainly start figuring out where and lining that up because right. it's gonna bringing a 13 people through a, a building in the middle of right. a school that's day, true. you know, we were, we're not just going to sure. say, Jack, but, you know, if you got 13 people, you had to show the school to while everybody classes were in session, that might be kind of a big disruption. Right. So you, there may be some advantage advantages and disadvantages of doing it when school's not in session. But I could see it even doing it at the end of a school day. That's I right. mean, like when the school year is in session, but classes aren't in session, would be... When, uh, when the buildings are set up, right? right. Yep. Set up and at least through a day, maybe seeing them at the, the end of the day would actually be telling mm -hmm. to us. Right. But, yeah. Okay. Uh, good ideas. Okay. Energy efficiency possibilities. Do you want to get into the store theory or you want to wait? I, if that's okay, with you, I'm going to table this for next 
time because I'm missing just a few key information and, and uh, I haven't had time to really talk it out with uh, Jay and Terry and I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything in my, in my progress so I'm going to tell it until our next one. Okay. <coughs> uh, if people have thoughts about the next meeting exactly what should be on the agenda, we could throw them out now but I would suggest also that I mean, Dorothy and I and uh, Terry and that we kind of talk together um, to think, of, I mean, we'll come up with a, with a I think we should, uh, can we discuss a date for it? Knowing that yeah. I, yes. I'm not going to be Wait. there on the next yeah. one. That's good. I'm yeah. not going to be there in July. It's always good to keep the date. But too. just to keep everybody's schedule right now. Right. Yeah, very good. So ordinarily we're supposed to do, I don't, is the school board meeting in July? I there is one, there's in, one July. in July. Yes. Is there, and is July 14th. Not. No, there's one. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. There's one. There's one. Yeah. I know there's always one every month, but I thought we were taking one off. We did not have a June work session. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Right. Sorry about that. Right. 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 July. 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 I thought we dropped some meeting. I, I could we did. Okay, that's Do we have a June work session? Okay. And I don't know, but because I wouldn't be here for the June work session anyway. Sorry. So we may be dropping both work sessions. Okay. So, okay. So um, we had said it would be the first Thursday, the 7th, and if we are having our school board meeting on the regular second Thursday of the 14th, um, we should try to do the 7th. Dorothy will be in France. Yeah, I will be visiting France. Folks. Yeah, happily been seeing her family after a long time, which is great. Uh, so it'll, uh, how is the rest of your schedules? I am not sure. So you won't be here. What about everybody else? Everybody. Just do a, a thumbs up if you're there. And yeah. Which which week? July seven. July seven. You won't be here. I'm out of time. Three. Jerry, David. Okay. So Canada, July. Canada is doing the summer. Four. You won't be there. Uh. Is that, is that Terry's that day? day? That's that's you're five. Out. That's five absences. Yeah. You're out for two weeks. We've you're out for four two weeks. I'm out for a whole month. I know you yeah. are. And Jack is out for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. So, question: Would um, the second, the Monday, the 11th, would that work better for people? I got a, a, a yes. That was a no. Okay. I got a no. and still no, no. You don't I have not scheduled my vacation yet. I'm not making it. I don't have my calendar here for all these days. <laughs> I think I think we should take so we just as do many that. as we can and, and do deal with it because no. trying to get every summer will not work. Crazy. Crazy. So do we want to do the seventh or the eleventh so we can add you? Who's going to add up you? Add. Maybe we get we get one more person. So, okay, you want to do the eleventh then? Why don't we do the eleventh? Let's just okay. plan on that. Monday, July eleventh. Oh, Here at 7 p.m. <coughs> yep, here at 7 p.m. <coughs> um, okay. Yeah, thanks for that reminder. When you go to a meeting, you always want to set your next meeting before you break up. Otherwise, it's a pain trying to pull it together. Okay, anything else uh, that people want to say before we bid adieu? Yeah, from the community or as many people are really excited about the information that's going to be coming forward of what can be rehabbed, what needs to be new. And thanks. For all, it's obviously a lot of time for a lot of people. Thank you. Thanks, Terry. That brings to my question. Yeah. What is your name? I'm Thor. Oh, you're Thor. Hi, Thor. Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And everybody may know this but me, uh, because I haven't been involved in every conversation, but what deliverable is this going to be going to produce for the board? Have you seen the charge of, of the committee? Yes, what was the, the first slide in, this, in uh, Jacob's slideshow? Right? No, 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 that's our mission state, uh, so that's mission. the district mission. The district's mission, okay. We're going to deliver a report to um, the school board. Uh, regarding what a, per a permanent improvement plan, basically 
we're kind of creating one so we can see what that looks like and um, and then the school board will make a decision how to go forward in terms of what this is. So it'll be yeah. okay. so so uh, in some form of report. It'll be comprehensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's also where the facilities and the gas advisor. Yes, I mean, this plan of budget will play an important role there, definitely, as well. Any other comments or questions? <laughs> 